I'm Grant Wonercheck. I'm the Safety, Health, and Security Manager at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. When COVID first hit the U.S., it was in Seattle. So we were already planning for COVID to come to Oregon. And then it just seemed like it happened overnight almost, and we were forced to close. We initially just closed to the public. And a week later, we uh, closed to staff as well. So um, non-essential staff. Um, we're required to work from home or non-essential on-site staff, I should say. Um, so our facilities crew and some of our exhibit repair people still stayed on site and worked. Something that was really cool that OMSI did um, is we uh, started a emergency child care program and it was a grant funded project. So it was free for families to come. So we did that from March until June um, when we started our summer classes. In May, we uh, created our reopening task force and I think one thing that was really valuable for that team is we had people from every area of the museum on it. So we were able to get input from our events team, our guest services team, our outreach team. It was a really collaborative um, approach. And a part of that was creating our um, COVID-19 response plan, which uh, is still growing <laughs> as more things change. Uh, it's about a 50 page document and it goes from very basic um, on-site stuff and hand washing to uh, actual communication email templates. So if we had a COVID exposure, uh, we were able to email that out very quickly. So we followed um, a lot of public health guidelines in creating that document. And we actually put a focus on Oregon Health Authority's policies and procedures that often mirror what the CDC and WHO said. Um, but we wanted to make sure that our policies and procedures were local. So even when we list our um, symptoms on our health screening, the way we rank those is relevancy of symptoms that people in Oregon are facing. So there are little kind of nuances that we have done. So that way we're reflecting what is going on locally here in Portland and in Oregon. Um, and then obviously uh, just being in touch with Multnomah County Public Health officials, so following their guidance too. During initial closure, we focused a lot on digital content and we're still doing a lot of digital content and we've uh, even been doing digital events. So um, we've been shipping out um, alcohol boxes. We do OMSI After Darks, which is a 21 and over event. So we've still been doing those as the pandemic's been going. Um, and then as staff have started to return to work, we're just having to make sure that office spaces are set up safely. So we don't have um, a lot of shared office spaces, and if we do, making sure those desks are far enough apart. I think there was a lot more um, anxiety about reopening in June 2020 than where we are here in July 2021, where a lot of people have been able to get vaccinated now. Um, so for staff coming back, a lot of it was just making sure that they felt safe and making sure that they were comfortable. And even before Oregon implemented their mandatory mask policy, uh, we made masks mandatory for staff. So uh, we just really want to make sure that they felt safe, comfortable. That they also had the supplies that they needed, that we had hand sanitizer in their areas for them. We also do a separate training with our guest services team, just since they're more guest facing rather than someone who's working in an office space. So we did look into um, who is the, you know, 10 minute Zoom training? Uh, who's that catered to? Most, mostly, you know, office staff. Uh, but then a lot of those guest facing and child facing positions, those trainings we generally did in person in larger groups, just so that way if there were any questions or anything, um, I was there and to help and answer. I think looking at how we can take what we learned from the pandemic and use that moving forward. So like digital content, I think people are a little tired of the Zoom <laughs> and stuff now, but we were able to hit audiences that we weren't able to hit before without digital content. So I, that is still a plan for us moving forward to keep our digital content going. And then really just monitoring and being able to adapt uh, and be flexible. Cases are continuing to rise right now. Um, and so one thing that we're doing right now, since we're doing summer programs with kids, we're having up to 300 kids a day on uh, our campus and with uh, kids under the age of 12 not eligible to be vaccinated yet, we're still requiring visitors to be wearing masks. Uh, we're going through about four to 500 face masks a day just because people don't know that they have to wear one here. 
Um, and so once we explain the reasoning, they often understand, but that's been a challenge that we've been facing over the last month is just with face masks no longer mandatory by the government, we're still making that mandatory because of the vulnerable populations that we have that can't get vaccinated. I think COVID is something that no one was prepared for. Something that uh, OMSI has done uh, is we created an emergency response team about two years ago and we meet quarterly and we train and we do exercises. So we'll do tabletop exercises. We've done one on a flood event because we're on the Willamette River. Uh, in 1996, there was a big flood and we were actually closed for three months because of the damages. We also include people from different areas. So it's not just a facilities, it's not just our president, it's not just guest services. Uh, every department's represented on that team. Uh, so that way we're all affected when an emergency happens, even if you're not the person who's dropping sandbags during a flood, everyone's still involved in it. So <clears throat> we train and we exercise, you know, our emergency response plans. And I think that's very helpful. Obviously, you know, we couldn't plan for COVID. <laughs> no one could plan for COVID. But I do think just that additional training and having that team ready to go at all times uh, is very valuable. And I think that's helped us with COVID, even though, um, you know, we, like everyone else, were blindsided <laughs> by COVID. We trained for active shooters and earthquakes and floods and all of that. We were not ready for a global pandemic. <laughs> I don't think anyone was. Uh, I brought that our emergency response, or our COVID response plan was based on local guidelines. Working with local partners, so you know, we were in talks with the Portland Art Museum, the zoo, the Children's Museum, which uh, unfortunately closed um, a couple months ago. But, um, you know, and making sure that we were all in alignment. So when the mask, uh, when the CDC came out, I think in May with the vaccinated people no longer need to wear face masks inside, Oregon immediately adopted that. Um, and there was a collection of uh, institutions that met and still said, you know, we will be moving forward requiring face masks. So that way we're moving forward united. And so really working with you know your local institutions i think it's great to also branch out and see what other you know museums might be doing across the nation uh, because COVID is hitting all of us but i do think it hits us all differently based on where we're at even if like you know your neighbors in your own community and a crisis happens such as an earthquake or something of that nature the odds of you know them helping you and you helping them and already having that relationship established uh, goes up immensely versus if there's a crisis in your neighborhood and you have no idea who your neighbors are, having that relationship established is a huge benefit.